Williams examined his hands. They were not like his own, lacking a joint on each finger, but equipped with eight in total. The whole body was a little strange, not entirely unfamiliar, but definitely a bit off. Oates was the most interesting exoplanet to be discovered so far. Not the first to have life, but it was the first to harbour macroscopic life. Land and sea animals, something he liked to think of as a tree, even flowers. Over twenty light years from Sol, it wasn't the sort of voyage he was willing to take in the flesh, instead being transmitted here six months ago. So he had been using a polyplastic body, but the Minister of Oats Preservation had given the go-ahead for his plan. So now, his entire team was experiencing what it was like to be one of the higher life forms on the planet. Not precisely, but their forms were identical in appearance, though their android interiors and superior sensory organs would keep them safe and prevent any contamination. Oates was named for a colony commander, the first to discover the planet's native life, a common practice in the last three centuries, but it did make the planet's name a source of humour. The discovery of another macroscopic ecology was big news, though too many people had assumed aliens, the intelligent kind. But so far, none of the surveys had even detected the use of fire. The shuttle was fast approaching the surface. Holographic patterns and chameleonic plating made it difficult to see with the naked eye, blurring it into the sky, but it would not be very effective on the ground, so they were going to hover and drop. Williams had never used a drop line before, but two of his team were trained, so they were explaining it again and checking the belts. He was barely listening though, his attention fixed on the virtual window in his mind. It was displaying the terrain under the shuttle. It had slowed to rotor speeds now. All he could see was the tree canopy, its brilliant yellow leaves arcing toward the sun. There were signs of movement, patches of rustling and bending branches. The jungle was home to hundreds of species, including several that closely mirror the primate body plan. The oak's canopy lemur was among them, believed to be the most intelligent and the inspiration for the form he and the team were wearing. The shuttle came to a stop, hovering some twenty meters above the trees, a clearing below. It was the planned drop site, so it was time to immerse himself in the world. The team gathered around the door as it opened, sweet-smelling air flowing into the shuttle. Not unlike the smell of cinnamon, specialist booties went first, swinging out of the shuttle and sailing down the rope. She was quickly on the ground and holding the rope securely. One by one, the team descended down. Williams was second to last, coming down just before specialist Acorn, the team's climbing and survival specialist. Belts removed and secured to the line, the team was ready to begin. The sound of the shuttle soon fading away. Williams consulted his map data, identifying the direction of the planned camp, climbing into the canopy and making their way northeast, to the outskirts of the Oats Lima territories. It took three hours to reach the area, during which he was able to take images of the largest predator in the jungle, as it watched them climb, hoping for one to fall. The site was dense with local insects and fruits, the foods the lemurs eat, plenty of opportunities to gather data. Everything he ate would be scanned, its DNA examined and transmitted back to the colony in orbit. Two days drifted by, the team examining the wildlife and watching the lemurs in action. They were active during the day, resting in the treetops at night, so on the second evening Adams planned to sneak a brain scan or two. Williams couldn't say no. He was as curious as the rest of the team. Along with Acorn, they left the camp soon after the sun set. It wasn't far to climb, just a few trees over, where a family of eleven spent their nights, huddled together in a pile, their tails and legs wrapped around branches. It was easy to scan them. The palms of his hands equipped with neural scanners all he had to do was hold their head for a minute. Between the three of them, all eleven were scanned within fifteen minutes. 
so they ventured deeper into the jungle, working away at gathering more. After a few hours, they had gathered hundreds of neural maps and were heading back for camp. Williams could just make out the camp ahead when the sky instantly turned to day. A shining flare of light caused lemurs throughout the jungle to wake, screeching at the sky and racing around the branches. It was an explosion, streaks of flames in its wake. The three of them immediately tried to call the colony. There was nothing at all. No reply. No data connection. The team were alone. If the colony had been destroyed, they would be stuck here. William signaled to the others to make for camp. The flash of light had entirely faded when they reached it. The whole team awake and terrified. None of them could connect to the colony in orbit. It soon dawned on them that the next colony was due to arrive in three decades. Until then, they were alone on an alien world.